start of the IndyCar season. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be seeing Verizon for at least uh, at least till the Indy 500, <laughs> I think. Um, but I would say um, the one guy that I'm really keeping my eyes on this year uh, is Felix Rosenquist, uh, obviously taking over the seat for Ed Jones in the number 10 for uh, mm-hmm. Chip Ganassi Racing. And he is an extremely talented driver. We've seen a lot from him when he was in the Indy Lights ranks, and then he moved over uh, the last couple of years and was running Formula E. And without very much experience in those cars, he was winning races. Uh, yesterday, he led the, the practice starts in session one. Uh, didn't have as much speed in the second session. But to me, what I see there is a driver that maybe we could see a, a similar performance that we saw from Robert Wickens last year when we had a rookie who didn't quite get to victory lane but was fast pretty much everywhere we went, whether it was an oval or a road course or a street course, what have you, Wickens was fast. And I think we could see the same thing out of Rosenqvist. Obviously, he has the uh, the equipment in a Ganassi car. He's got a really great teammate in Scott Dixon to lean on. And that's really one guy that I'm taking a close eye on. Matthew, let's talk a little bit about uh, what's going on engineering-wise, and we'll get – uh, more into the technical part of it a little bit later on as we get into the season. But we uh, let's talk a little bit about the 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 uh, downforce and just, let's just talk let's talk tech if you will, uh, Matthew. For those of us that like to talk tech uh, with IndyCar, what are some of the changes that are going on, and what are some of the things that if you're a tech fan or a a, a, a spec fan or an engineer fan of IndyCar. Well, can you look well hopefully the cars will be a little bit quicker now, a little bit more stable now that they have a year plus uh, with this new aero package. Also curious to see how this uh, protective safety device that's now on the front of the car, right in front of the driver's face, uh, how that affects things as far as safety concerns uh, with all the situations that have happened in the recent months. And, of course, the unfortunately the fatal accidents that claimed uh, drivers such as Justin Wilson, for instance, uh, so be very curious to see how that uh, improves competition, especially at some of these uh, oval tracks where especially uh, we were expecting, you know, it to be easier to pass like in years past and unfortunately uh, kind of failed to deliver on that, uh, especially at the Indianapolis 500. But uh, I'd say right now it'll be interesting to see how the cars run. Uh, we had a 60.8 lap run by Ryan Hunter Ray. Of course, they bring in the red spec tires uh, today. Will they break the one-minute barrier today? Don't know. Possibility that that could be in play as far as qualifying, but uh, it should be very interesting to see uh, how things go uh, when we get to uh, race day and uh, how the competitive these cars are, because uh, especially getting through that first turn is going to be key with uh, this weekend. As you'd hate to see the season start with a big crash in the opening turn of the opening lap of the season. We're joined by Matthew Embry of. Uh, <laughs> WSVT up in South Bend, and I am so sorry about my voice. I guess I shouldn't have spent last night with uh, Paul Moles and a, and a uh, uh, PSB uh, whiskey, the new whiskey. No, I'm just kidding. That's not what I did, <clears throat> but you would think that's what I did with my voice. So I'm struggling, and I appreciate you guys helping me out. Matthew Embry of WSVT up in South Bend uh, joins us, our official IndyCar contributor. And actually, Tom, one in- thing I want to get to, <clears throat> and I want to get Ty involved in this, uh, Ty, what are your thoughts on, you know, the Canadian TV situation? A lot of situations, a lot of Canadian fans upset that, uh, you know, Sportsnet has pulled back on pull it covering IndyCar. There really isn't an IndyCar provider uh, for the series right now. I mean, how, from your perspective, I mean, how frustrating is it, you know, the hoops to have to jump through for, as a Cana- you know, for the Canadian fans to be able to cover, follow races uh, in 2019? Yeah, it's extremely frustrating because uh, this is something that we've kind of been seeing a lot of in Canada lately uh, with our racing coverage, obviously, with the collapse of uh, the Speed Channel several years ago and the move to Fox Sports 1. Um, Watching NASCAR has been a little bit uh, more inaccessible. Uh, And then even as far as uh, NBC taking over uh, NASCAR uh, coverage there, uh, we've gotten less coverage as well. Like we have uh, TSN... um, covering NASCAR, but it's still, they, they only cover so much. So we've had a little bit of difficulty there. And then uh, now with this news that Sportsnet is not going to be quite as accessible and um, 
some of it's going to be online and uh, there's only one channel that they're going to be showing the races on. And it's one of the, the channels that's not a part of the regular um, package that sports now offers. So you have to pay extra basically just to watch IndyCar. Um, and if you're like me, and, and that's really the only thing that you would be watching on Sportsnet, like you can watch hockey on the regular channels. You don't need to watch the premium channels to get hockey or, or even uh, Premier League or whatever you want to watch. So to get that that IndyCar coverage, you have to have the, the premium channels. And is it really worth it just for, for one channel? And I, I don't really know. So it's um, the, the coverage in Canada racing-wise is really – diminished quite a bit in the last few years and it's really disappointing to see this uh unfortunately it's not a surprise either um and right now uh as of right now the the opening race for the indycar season at st pete isn't even being shown on tv here so if you want to watch indycar you have to kind of have uh either ulterior motives and go another route um and and go with something that the tv (laughs) packages uh, don't want to do or you have to um, buy into Sportsnet's uh, online Sportsnet Gold, I think is what they call it, just to watch the race. Um, and that's really not worth it for a monthly subscription on the side of a TV subscription. So I think you'll see either a lot of Canadian fans fall the wayside and not watch IndyCar this season, or they're going to be uh, like me and maybe not watch on TV and find uh, ulterior uh, alternative ways to do it and maybe – to streaming. Uh, Tyson, yeah, I know, uh, Ty, Tyson, I, I know you're calling us up from uh, Toronto. Uh, you're our favorite Canadian. Uh, but uh, I mean, can I just ask a stupid question here? If I don't know. And, and again, this is a stupid question because I really don't know the answer to this, but is Verizon not available in, in uh, uh, Canada? If it is people who have Verizon, can download the IndyCar app and they can watch the race right there. Is that a problem yeah, so or is that? Go ahead. It is. Verizon is not a, is not a provider here in Canada. And actually uh, the last time I checked, um, which was probably at some point last year, that IndyCar app is also not accessible in Canada. Interesting. Interesting. Good, good conversations. And we'll, we'll monitor that. Uh, Matthew Embry, our official IndyCar contributor, walk us through the Firestone Grand Prix of St. Petersburg. Uh, walk us through the track. Obviously, qualifications are today. Uh, pre, uh, the race is tomorrow. And, uh, man, I'm just excited to, to have IndyCar back on. We've got IndyCar and NASCAR. My God, it's good to be a race fan in 2019. But let's let's talk a little bit about the track of uh, Firestone uh, of, of of St. Petersburg Street Course and 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 uh, Tyson, you're very familiar with street courses. Uh, obviously, up there in Toronto, your home uh, course is a is a street course. Uh, here in Indy, is a an oval course. We 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 talked a little bit about last week. Uh, uh, Matthew, we talked a little bit about the different types of courses between Road Street and uh uh oval and but this is a true street court course race in st petersburg obviously the home of dan weldon and we remember him every year uh as as this race happens st petersburg talk walk us around the track well obviously the key thing is i mean it's a mix of airport runway on the front straightaway because it's part of the st petersburg regional airport and also you know the taxiways and some of the back roads around there so you're going to have your on it changes in surface from concrete to asphalt. You're going to have your bumps and stuff like that. I'd be curious to see how things were. I think meant they had to put a temperature can, I think, one year uh, because the track tore up so bad in turn three and four. Hopefully they don't have to do that this year uh, because that just makes it tougher to be able to pass heading into four uh, down this, that little short straightaway. Obviously, big chance to get through and turning on the Dan Weldon way. Another place to pass and outbreak is at turn nine. And then uh, getting toward that uh, hairpin and getting through that chicane with good speed and getting through that hairpin possibly to either pass there or set up a run uh, down the main straightaway is uh, absolutely critical uh, to be able to gain ground if you don't get a good qualifying time. But uh, then we get to qualifying, and obviously uh, the same rules apply. Uh, You have two sessions, 12 cars each. Top six from each section advance to the second phase, and then obviously then the field's cut in half again down to the Firestone Fast Six, which will determine the pole. 
and then that will determine the uh, starting field uh, for Sunday. And, uh, again, uh, you want to have a good grid position here because even though, yeah, the possibility for a first lap crash is in play here, but you want to be able to control your own destiny. So if the crash does happen, you have a chance to be able to avoid it and uh, stay out of trouble. And uh, if you start near the back, the possibility of getting swallowed up in an accident uh, certainly is in play. But, uh, again, I think there is a very limited margin for error because outside of uh, Hanley on the list, you look from first through 23rd in the combined practice session times, Tom, difference of just 1.2 seconds. So if you don't bring your A game, you are going to be well back on the starting grid. And, I mean, you could see potentially some of the Penske guys back, could even see a coin car back there because Sebastian Bourdais, who's won this race twice, only was 18th on the timesheets out of 24. Another guy, Pagino, was only 17th on the list. And uh, even a Scott Dixon was only 13th. So, again, Andretti's up there, but you also have some new players. And it's, as far as Chevrolet, it's not necessarily – you know, Penske that's flying the flag. Right now, you have Spencer Piggott in P2 for Ed Carpenter Racing, a team that's not known as a road course team. And then you have a team, Carlin, that uh, had some flashes but is not necessarily what you would consider a key player yet or consistent front runner. So it's going to be a very interesting session today uh, looking to uh, qualification to see how this grid lines up. We could see a complete change of things, again, considering how close the field is from top to bottom with the exception, obviously, of Ben Hanley with the Dragon Speed car. We're joined by Matthew Embry, our official IndyCar contributor, and Tyson Lossenjager of OnPitRoad.com, uh, two people that I lean on for racing that make me look good and smart on this show. Tyson, talk with us a little bit about St. Petersburg uh, and what are you looking for this weekend uh, on, on the streets of St. Petersburg? Well, what I'm thinking we're going to see from St. Pete, you know, obviously, as, as Matt pointed out, we have a, a really close uh, field right now. Those first 23 cars are, there's not a lot of uh, gap in speed there. So I think we, we have a, a, the ability to see a really close race. But I think right now, uh, Honda seems to have the upper hand at the moment. Of course, it is only one day into the weekend. And and things can change as far as uh, today and tomorrow goes. But right now I see the Hondas showing a little bit more speed than Chevy right now. Team Penske seems to be a little bit behind, um, but I think that can be improved on. And, and the thing with these street courses is with the surface changes, which we see here in Toronto and then as well as St. Pete, Long Beach, it really makes things interesting for the drivers and poses a bit of a challenge. Uh, I think a little bit of experience always helps here, but at the same time, we saw um, we saw last year Robert Wickens do extremely well with no experience. Um, I really think right now the Andretti cars are showing uh, the most speed. Ryan Hunter Ray obviously leading in practice yesterday. Alex Rossi uh, winning this race last year. I think if you're if you want to win this race, those are the the, the drivers you have to kind of go through. Those are the guys you got to beat. Well, let's go Ty, look at it from this go, go standpoint, ahead, Ty. Uh, I mean, if you're going by the Wickens factor, does that bode well for, obviously, the guy that would come to mind if that would be a Colton Herta? Does that mean that Colton Herta has a realistic chance this weekend? I would say Colton Herta has a chance. I, I To me, I really think uh, he's not quite there yet. And I think that the, the rookie driver that we should be looking at as the um, the Robert Wickens of the year if, if you want to call him that, I would say is uh, Felix Rosenqvist. I think he is extremely talented and is extremely underrated and is probably not going to be as talked about as he should be this year because I think a lot of the focus is going to be placed on Colton Herta because of the name Herta and what he's done in Indy Lights and, and the ride he has now. And then uh, Marcus Erickson is going to be talked about quite a bit uh, being the new uh, Schmidt Peterson driver, however, I just don't see a whole lot out of him either. We didn't really see a lot out of him in Formula One, and I know he was, you know, not necessarily driving, you know, top grade equipment, but he was also outperformed by his teammates quite a bit in F1. If you look at uh, his first few years when he and um, Felipe Nasser were both rookies, and Nasser was head and shoulders above Ericsson, I was surprised, honestly, at how long. Erickson stayed in Formula One because I just really didn't see a whole lot out of him. I don't expect all that much out of him in IndyCar this year. Maybe he'll surprise me, 
Um, but I really think people are sleeping on uh, Rosenquist. Tyson, I know uh, we, I don't know how long we've got you for. I don't know if you can stay for another half hour or so, but I do, did want to make sure that we uh, talk with you about 